Massachusetts Speaker of the House Ron Mariano is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. Picking budget priorities as revenues get tight. Choices with consequences. How the road ahead looks now. The speakers in the chair. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Sharma Zaketi. As you can see with us at the table is Massachusetts House Speaker Ron Mariano. It's a busy time for you. Thank you for taking the time. Great Happy to see to you. Happy to be here. Great All to right. see you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. We're going to jump right in. Let's start with the funding on the emergency shelter crisis. The House is offering $245 million in supplemental funding this year and $500 million for next year's budget. Now, that's a lot less than what the governor had wanted, which was $915 million. What is your reasoning on this? Well, if you follow the evolution of this whole process, you, you know that the program began with an undetermined amount of time that you could be uh, in the program and you'd receive uh, housing. And, and you could stay food. in the shelter system for as long yeah. as you needed. But... As the numbers kept growing and the program kept growing and it started to price us into a position of difficulty as we have our own homeless issues to deal with, uh, the House is reluctant to give up having an impact on this process. We were the ones that said, no, let's limit the stay in this, in this program. Let's reduce it. We have reduced it from uh, 12 months to nine months now. Uh, you want to put guardrails in place, some we, checks. We, we need to be able to control the spending. Is the spending going to run out as early as Monday or by the end of April? We're hearing well, that you now. you know, we never got a date from the governor as to when it was going to run out. We were told that sometime in the spring it would run out. And we have a sub-budget that we're negotiating now with more money in it. Now, the money that the governor is taking, she took out of the... the, the uh, the fund that we have that that uh, isn't accounted for anywhere else and we haven't spent that money the money is still there mm -hmm. we can still take that money to backstop this program mm -hmm. we want to continue the program but we don't know where it's going to end and neither does the administration well and and, and the voters as well don't know when well when you it, know it i don't end? i don't think we're losers when when we show some restraint in some desire to control the cost of this program. Well, and, and you can see the, the position that they might be concerned if, the, if this amount of money has to go here, it's going to take away from here because it's only a finite amount of money. Absolutely. It's, it, anyone who's done a budget in their household knows that you have these unexpected expenses. At some point, you dip into the principles that, that you live on. So yeah. you'd rather do sort of a piecemeal approach that give up until this point and see where you're at at that point. Evaluate the program if it needs to be changed. You know, I've said this, and I get criticized in one of the papers, which is not a big deal, but um, because it, it looked like I was saying two different things when I said we're not expecting any help from Washington. Look, it, it's an election year. We don't know who's going to win. We don't know how they're going to deal with this problem in Washington. The problem isn't our creation. The problem was created in Washington. Mm -hmm. They have to fix mm -hmm. it. I don't know what's going to happen next year. If we get a bill for, it's going to be close to a billion. billion. The governor's yeah. saying over 900 million, some do you close think, enough. Do you think yeah. this will be able conti to continue? It this program? may, it may not. I don't know. I think that a lot is going to depend on what controls we can we can uh, make work for this program? And I, I I don't want to you know burden the conversation with budget and money and budget and money, but but let's talk reality here. Governor Healy has put a hiring freeze into effect because of lower tax collections. March saw a rebound, right? Uh, half a, half a month. Uh, right, okay, yeah. half a month. Uh, April. We're waiting for April. Yeah. Any indications where? Well, the hope is that April is is usually one of the stronger months. So the hope is that we will we will start to rebound in April. But there's no guarantee, Ed. Right, well, uh, you know, this, this is, we're at the mercy of, of uh, the economy right now. We had eight, nine months of, of uh, less than predicted revenues, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we've had a half a month of, of uptick. It's not enough to hang your hat on. 
as a wise man once said, hope is not a strategy. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> not. I got plenty of hope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, where the House is investing is the T, a record $555 million toward the MBTA with another $185 million to go to regional transit systems. This is the biggest investment ever by the House. Now, General Manager Phil Eng, he has just marked one year in that leadership role. Are you confident this money is going to be spent wisely? I am. I, I, I've seen a change. Uh, as you know, I have four T stations in Quincy, and, and they're all on the red line, which has not had a great track record. Uh, but but Mr. Ng's hands-on approach, his, his field operation of walking through the stations, walking the tracks, looking at why the rails uh, cause these slowdowns, and, and getting in and... Uh, finding the root cause of some of the problems that we've experienced here is a change in the way this place has been managed. For a lot of years, the general manager was out of a theoretical think tank and in, in, was a transportation expert, knew mm -hmm. their stuff, but wasn't a hands-on and didn't have the total support of all of the Yeah, you the said workers. Phil Ng's a train guy. He is a train guy. That's why I made the joke about he can walk down the tracks and not electrocute himself. You know? <laughs> but, the t but the T has said it'll take, what, $25 billion to restore the system to a good state of repair? <laughs> well, I didn't say I was going to fix it in my terms. <laughs> okay, I'm just, okay. The, 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 well, the, and the GM says he thinks that the turnaround is already occurring. Are, 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 I, are I you think seeing signs I think that? I've seen some signs. Uh, it, it's a long way from returning. It's a long way from returning. And I get a little crazy sometimes when when we start to talk about freeze fears and all this, these ancillary issues, because to me, none of it matters if the train catches fire five minutes after you leave the station. You know, we have to make sure that people are safe, that it's comfortable, that it's clean, um, and it's running on time. Just, just, just yes or no, are you a, a fan of free fares? I, I am not. Um, not, no, Where not you, totally you, free. No. I, I think it can mean tests. Uh, if you want to help some folks, a segment of the economy that has difficulty. But not as a blanket. Not as a blanket, no. All right, no. I want to ask you about steward health care. The financial crisis involving steward remains very much unsolved. Do you think for-profit companies belong in health care? Some do, some don't. Um, I do think that the steward situation is unique. It isn't Cerberus Capital that created the problem at, Sir, at uh, Stewart. It was the management of Stewart selling the land to a holding company of which they have a majority interest, uh -huh. which smacks of a Ponzi scheme of the highest order. Well, let me ask you this. Senator Elizabeth Warren at the federal level and Senator Markey, they both proposed different bills. Senator Warren says state lawmakers can pass restrictions at the state level to put limits, some sort of guidelines. Yeah, we can. And we're that. looking at things. We're looking at things to make changes to take control of the situation, take the 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 flexibility away from not just capital companies, but but hospitals even to sell the land from underneath them on on their assets. That is the nut of the problem. Now we we had problems with Stewart from the very beginning because they never would submit their financials to the HPC. Every other hospital in Massachusetts submits their financials. They fought us in court, lost, and appealed. They keep appealing. They've never submitted any numbers to us. So we don't know where they spent mm -hmm. their money or how they spent their mm -hmm. money. And so do you expect any sort of solution? It sounds like every you're we, just starting oh, out. I, but... I think on the federal level, there's a federal solution. Stewart got federal money. Why does a company that has federal money get federal money to spend in a regulated industry not have to follow the regulations of the state? And the answer to that question is? There's no law that says they have to. There's no law that says they have to. So how quickly can lawmakers at the state level I don't know, but it's, it's a federal issue. There are local things that we can do. We can stop the transfer of property, uh, sales of, of lands, the contingents of the hospital. There are restrictions we can put around how hospitals expand. I've tried to do a, a determination, a need bill, which would, which would allow us to control some of the expansion of health care, some of the growth. But I'm going to say that although we don't really want to see 
Stewart as a principal health care agent in our state. We do recognize the fact that there are beds that we need and that we have to use this opportunity to make sure that the health care system that we're going to provide is adequate for the patients in and around the areas that need them. You know, I'm a little concerned because there's a cluster of hospitals in the north uh, of Boston. Concerned about closures. Yeah. yeah. That, that aren't performing well. 